areas. to some greens always sparkles up your painting. Golds and reds and greens together. And, uh, always add a little bit of unexpected. It just makes it more interesting. A little touch of purples. Pretty soon we're going to be on to our next step. And uh, these details can be just a little bit sharper because they're just a little bit closer and they're more in focus. Now we're going to block in some of the water in the distance behind this rock and uh, this, this area here. And uh, usually the water is just reflections of all the other things around it. So basically we're using the same uh, colors that we've been using. Um, the rocks are reflecting the, the color of the sky. They're kind of a gray, pink, purple color. Um, so I do want to kind of um, block those in as well. But I'm, first I'm going to start on the water in here and make my way to the, the, work, the edges that we just did. So the water is reflecting the trees above it and so we're going to be using a lot of those colors. There's already a little bit of wet paint that I put down earlier, so that's kind of mixing in with this color. And I just start kind of looking over here at the photograph. Also, the rock is a very dark color, so I'm going to just kind of block that in. separate the water and the rock later when I start adding more details. Um, there's also some very dark colors back here, some rocks, and if I get a better idea of where they are, blocking them in with this dark color, then I can get a better idea of what I need, where I need my water as well, so I might as well put in that first layer of color for the rocks, which is basically this dark black that we mixed earlier. Now the water in this area is a little lighter because this, this uh, clip is a little lighter. So I can grab more of a greenish color. I don't want it to be, you know, as light as that, so I didn't even bother cleaning my brush. So I let the dark color that was on my brush blend into that color that I'm putting in the background. There'll be other colors in here as well, but this is a good start. Here, there's a lot of white water, and uh, 
out. There's some rocks back here that I would like to do. I'm just taking the, the paint that's on my brush and kind of blending it into the light color that was already. It was like that sky color that we put in earlier. Back here where there's a lot of white water, I want what's underneath that white water not to be so dark. So it's going to be kind of a gray color. I'm going to take my pale blue that I originally thought was going to be my sky color and use that in here just to block in. So this is just white with a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow in it. Not a lot of any of those colors, mostly white. And then I can start adding other details to it. This has got to be kind of peeking around the corner of that. And you see I just kind of get the basic um, shape of, of where things are. Slowly but surely make them uh, kind of blend together. And there's like a little bit of rough water, so if I dab the water a little on the, the brush a little and give it some texture. And I may or may not keep that. I'd rather really do the details of this uh, white water last. But for now, I'm just going to uh, kind of get an idea where it all is and I will kind of blend it together until it's more flat and then I will add the details on top of that. details just right because that's what's going to kind of draw your eye into that piece. And at the moment it looks like my horizon line isn't very straight. So I'm going to adjust it a bit. brush here that has no paint on it at all. I'm just going to kind of blend together some of that wet paint. And I'm going to lose some of my really bright, bright whites or the lighter colors. But that's okay. I'll bring them back later. Right now I just kind of get a better idea where all my lights and darks are going to be. And this time it's going to be closer to the colors that it's going to be. Shaking this a lot, aren't I? There we go. You can see a little better. One of my biggest goals is to get rid of that white. Just for fun, I want to get rid of that white. And I'm going to get rid of it using this kind of gray purple color. And that feels so good to have no more white left on my canvas. Except there is a little spot up there. I'll get to that in a second. So now's the time I need my glasses to look at this picture and say, okay, what is it that makes this area interesting? And I need to put in some more contrast. I need to put in some darker darks and some lighter lights and those rocks that are in there. And 
so this is where I need my very tiniest brush. I am going to darken this area up just a little. I'll bleed that eye back there. Oh, I just noticed something. There are some tree trunks back there. That'll add some interest. You know, I said not to put too much detail in the distance, but a little bit will always help add interest. So there's a couple of tree trunks way back there. start getting crazy with little tiny stuff. So there are little hints of rocks along the edges. I'm going to start out with my darks and then add some highlights to them. There's two rocks way, way back there. And they don't have to be that sharp. They're far away. Soften this up a little. There, there's some bigger rocks. As the rocks get closer, they start getting bigger. And you know, in a photograph, the contrast tends to be uh, more intense than in real life. And so things that are far away may be more uh, dark and more light than they need to be. So just remember, things that are far away should not be as dark or as light. Or you know, they can be light, but they can't be really dark because things that are far away are not that dark. Things that are close up can have a stronger contrast base of each rock that's going to be in the water, it should be fairly flat. Because that's, the water comes right up to it and flattens them out, so you don't want any rocks that have round bottoms. Because it just won't look right. Somebody will think it, something's wrong with it. Alright, I'm going to block in some of these bigger rocks that are back. do the shadow part first. So it looks like there's a rock right here. I'm just doing the under side of it where the shadow is. the rock that's behind it first. Right. There. And then the one in front of that. Looks like what's behind this rock is dark, so I, was, I always ask myself, how can I, how come I can see that edge? That edge, I can see it because what's behind it is darker. So I'm gonna darken this area up back here. It looks like it's just some shadow in the water and I'm gonna bring out some detail that looks like water. So I'm 
basically finishing up this distance water before I go on to my next step. This brush is just a tad big for what I need it for, but get away with it. And there's a few more rocks in here that I want to do. I don't have to do every single rock I see, but I think these rocks are important. They lead the eye up to this rock. So I'm going to put in one rock there. Probably making these rocks too big now that I look at my reference photo. These rocks look huge. Oh well. Little hints of grass back there that I can put in. Also, I, I don't want to keep these rocks all exactly the same color. I'm going to add other colors to the rocks. Like little touches of purples and grays and greens. And that hopefully will give it some more dimension to them. Because if they were all just gray and white, they wouldn't be very interesting. And I'll put this rock in. Sometimes the photo, you can copy the photo exactly and uh, it doesn't read as a rock and, and that may be because the rock itself may not be the greatest rock to paint. This rock here isn't the center of interest, so I don't want any of these edges to be really sharp. I want them to be a little bit out of focus because that's not where I want the eye to go off to this side up here. I want the eye to go in this area. And so I will not put as much attention on this area as I will over here. Before I go any further, I'd like to add some more color. To this area. There's some greens and some golds. It's kind of a little dark green. Remember, whenever you need a really dark green, just add some blues or some reds to it. Sometimes with water, I'll go over it oh, again and again and again with lots of different colors until I'm happier with it. I will bring about the contrasts and all the subtle things I see in the water wherever I see color. There's some beautiful reds and golds in this area, I can use some of my cadmium red with some yellow ochre and put that in here. And that's kind of reflecting some other colors, but a lot of it is actually the color of the rocks under the water. And that's always tricky to try to show what's under the water and what's in the water and what's on top of the water. This transparent stuff wet. So that's always uh, a challenge, very much so. Let's um, make this rock more precise. This rock here 
It should be a little taller. Maybe it's not taller, maybe it's just a reflection that makes it look taller. I'm thinking that that's the way it is, but there's a reflection down here. Causes that rock to look just a little taller. And if uh, in the photo I don't see it as much, I can see it in a bigger one. But I can uh, exaggerate that in uh, the painting so that the viewer can see it. So that's where the line is for the water. And there's a lot more details in these reflections that I'll put in later. But for now, get the idea. So I'm just really putting some rough brush strokes in. And then I can take um, my dry brush, my bigger dry brush, and kind of soften those up. I Sometimes I want to see brush strokes, and other times I want the brush strokes to kind of blend and uh, be much more smooth. So right now, I like my final brush strokes to be the smooth ones. These ones are underneath everything. I'd rather them to be. Oh, I said I said that backwards. My final brush strokes should be the more um, more prominent, and the ones underneath are the smooth ones. Did it backwards. So it's coming along. We're back. Uh, I took a little break. It's been a few days and now uh, my painting is fairly dry, dry to the touch, and uh, I can continue and add all the rest of the details to it hopefully today. And uh, I wanted to discuss the wet on wet. What we did before was working with the paint wet on wet and, uh, and I don't have a problem with that but some of my students uh, are a little concerned and think they, they cannot control it as well. So um, they like to let the paint dry in between each layer and that way if they mess up on the second layer they don't mess up the first layer because it's, it's still dry and you could just wipe it off. So uh, let's continue and uh, start adding more detail to this. Now I'm going to start by increasing some of the highlights that I did, but I also want to mention that my palette, all the paints that we were working with last time are still very fresh and very um, moist and haven't dried out at all. And the reason is, first of all, they're oils, so they don't dry very fast anyway. But I also um, have a special palette seal that it's like a big Tupperware thing. and I. Um, seal it in that and I store it in the freezer and that keeps the paint good for months and I don't have to waste any paint so um, it's always nice to be able to come back to your paint and not have to remix every single color. I noticed my rocks aren't as bright as I'd like them to be. I want them to kind of stand out so I'm taking a little bit of that very light purple. This is almost white. It's just a touch of purple and I'm gonna 
and add up some little highlights to the top of each one of these distant rocks. And uh, I did kind of went out, out of my boundaries here. So this is a, a really nice way of showing you how I can fix my painting. I can just swipe it with a clean brush and it's all gone. So all this attention to detail and being very careful in every little thing you do will help your painting look the best it can. So every one of these rocks is not quite as light as I'd like them, at least the highlight part. And because it's not wet anymore, this paint will pop a little bit easier. It won't mix into the previous paint. And so sometimes I'll go in and uh, increase the contrast or the brightness after it's dried because it, it's easier to do it at that point. Even in the shadow, I don't want it to be um, void of, I don't want it to be flat. So in the shadows, I might add other colors, like this is kind of a purplish brown. And even though I don't see that much going on in the photograph, I do still, if we were there with our naked eye, we would be able to see um, details in the shadows. So I'm going to put a little bit more details. And here I am taking a dry brush and softening it up because I don't want those details to be really sharp. Maybe I'll do the same over here. Add some details in the rocks in the shadow area. Get rid of that spot. All right, now we get ready to continue with the water and the foreground. I'm going to take that same color, this is kind of a purple brownish color, and uh, add some details to these distant rocks before we go any further. There's a rock here. taking my dry brush and kind of softening up those edges. They're a little too sharp. And don't forget to step back. You can't look at your painting the entire time using your magnifiers. You have to take them off and look at them without it now and then to see how it's going because sometimes you get too drawn in with the details. Okay. This area in here has a little bit of shadow on the land and so uh, and there's lots of lots of little rocks and and grass in here. Um, I'm going to paint from the dark to the light. Uh, I don't want to completely finish this area. I'll do the grass later. Right now I just want to put in the rocks and I want to show you how I um, give the illusion of a, that, a lot of detail with just uh, a few interesting techniques. So I'm going to take a little bit of this light purple that we used before and I'm going to add some more dioxin purple or dioxin violet, whatever it's called, to 
to it and it's a little too purpley there, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre. And let's, I'm going to, I think that needs to have a little bit more ultramarine blue in there. And hopefully, that'll be close to the color I need for my shadows. Oops, a little bit of green, that's okay. Looking at the land area, and I'm putting this in to the darker spots. There are also some blacker areas than what this color is, but right now it's kind of the medium dark value. I put in that basic shape. bit of that color in here. And I'm very loose at this point. I haven't started adding any details. I can just go ahead and put that in. Just to give it a little texture. I'll kind of pounce here and there. Alright. I'm going to use a, the darker um, blackish color that we made early and really define these edges a little bit more. The same color that we used up here in the rocks. Just making sure my, everything is defined with all the values that I want. Using my Filbert brush, this little tiny round one. This is um, the number two in this brand, and I'm just kind of pouncing and get leaving texture. I don't want to smooth it out too much because this is a very rocky area, and I'm putting in shadows where my my grass will be. So these are your grassy shadows. All right. Okay, so there's a couple more things to do here before I'm happy. And the next step would be a lighter value around here and we can still use some of the lighter colors that we used back here on the rocks. Actually some of the colors that are in the sky too. So this is kind of a pale blue color that we used. And I'm gonna put I'm not gonna put in every single rock or anything. I'm just gonna give it a few areas where it's a little lighter than of it. Now, I'm not worried about real being real careful at this point. I'm just getting a general idea of where there are lights and darks. And, I, and these would be a lot bigger rocks than the rocks you see in the picture. Now, I'm gonna show you my little trick. And remember us using the stencil brush back here with, for our um, foliage and our trees and bushes. Um, it's a very st stiff brush. And I'm going to do something I like to call splatter. It's a splatter technique. And what I do is um, I, I thin my paint. Now this is the only time I allow my students to thin their paint with a little bit of water because the medium is just a little too thick. And um, so I'm going to grab some paint from the same colors that I used earlier. So I'm going to start with this purple color that I mixed earlier. And I get it nice and soppy. I don't want it 
really runny, but I want it to be kind of wet. And then I'm going to practice on my canvas, on my palette, um, making the splatter. So watch that, this little guy. And it looks like it's making very large splatters. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. This is how I test it to make sure it's just about right. Ah, did you see those little tiny dots that that made? So this is how I get a lot of my textures in my painting. And so now I'm gonna splatter and I'm trying to aim. Now this takes some practice, so um, if you haven't done this before, practice on something that's not so <clears throat> precious as your painting, so you could probably practice up here or somewhere. And that, you can see that beautiful um, area, and it takes some practice to aim. So I'm pretty sure I can aim this just where I want it. And I'm leaving little dots of color and I can continue until I am happy with this color. And don't worry if you get it in places that you don't want it because luckily my painting is dry and I can come along and just lift up any of the dots that I'm not happy with. But I've become pretty good aim and I can uh, kind of get an idea of where it's going to be. Okay, I'm going to add the darker, darker dots with that darker color that we used earlier. And this one's getting a little wild. It's going all over the place, so that's okay. I'll fix that. And I never do just one or two colors. I always do at least three or four. And I always like to do an unexpected color. But first, these are the expected ones. The, the medium, the light, the dark. So I'm going to try to do this right. Huh. My aim is not so good right now. But that's okay. Don't worry. I can fix that. Um, so the unexpected color would be, let me see, there's some bright pinks and, and maybe a little bit of uh, oranges in here. So if I kind of grab a color and kind of, uh, I'm gonna make kind of a warm, this is a, almost a coral. A pretty, pretty warm color. So, very out of control. Then I can uh, go back in and rein in and control it a little bit better. So, all these little dots that got away from me, I can take a clean brush and just wipe them off. And back here, even in the water, I may not want to get rid of all of them. Some of those splatters might actually be what I, I'd like to keep. I still want to go in and uh, make some individual rocks now. And I'm going to take my, my liners and I'm going to put a dark color on one and a light color on the other. And I can now kind of go back and forth and make individual rocks that I want to highlight. Some, some of them kind of got destroyed by the splatter, so I can come along and individually make a few rocks that stand out. But those tiny little splatters really are effective in doing rocks and many other things like splashes of water or wildflowers in a field. I'm going to take a little bit of the ultramarine 
and a little bit of this pale blue. Okay, maybe I want more of the Prussian blue. This is kind of an aqua color. Maybe a little bit of yellow. I want kind of a blue green. There we go. A little touch of kind of a gray, blue, blue green color. So not all these rocks are exactly the same color. I could even have splattered with that color. That would have been nice. But I think I have enough splatter for now. So this you just keep going and for, you don't have to do um, the shadow for every single one of those rocks, but if you take some of the rocks and put a little bit of a dark color underneath each few of them, you'll let your viewer will fill in all the other details. So now I think I will finish up the water then I'll be working on the final details, which are the grass and the tree branch up there. So let's work on getting some of those details in this distant water first, and then work our way forward. So most of our water underneath is finished, except for, um, I can see some rocks under this water. I'm not so sure if it'll read very well, but I'm gonna try and I'm going to make a color for those rocks. All right, so I'm gonna start with yellow ochre and add a little bit of the cadmium red medium to it. And I got a very bright orange. And I wanna, I don't need it to be that bright, so I'm gonna kinda of dull it down with a little bit of alizarin crimson Wow, not done. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow, um, ultramarine blue to this. Don't need much. What that's gonna do is make kind of a brown color, a reddish brown. We've got a nice orange color. Anytime you add blue to, to orange, you're gonna get a nice brown. And this area here is what I'm aiming at, and I think that's close enough. I'm using my liner again, and it looks like I may have to darken up that area before I put in that warmth, that, that warm brown. So I'm going to use my dark color, that blackish purple, on here first, and it goes all the way up here. It's reflecting that dark um, cliff behind it. So I think doing this first will give a nice base to that orange. And I can go all the way back here. You don't want anything back in the distance to be too dark, but I'm gonna soften it up and blend it in a few minutes. So. First, I'm applying my paint on the surface. And then I'm going to kind of blend it a little bit. So if I use my number two filbert, kind of clean and dry, I can, so I can kind of blend it into the dry paint. You remember the paint underneath here is pretty dry. Now if it was wet, I would just do the same thing. I would make sure that my brush is very soft and very um, dry and just kind of smooth it into that surface. And 
try to keep on water, you want to keep your, your strokes kind of flat and horizontal. No, that's really black, but that's okay because I'm going to go in on top of that with my, my other colors. So first I'm going to do what's underneath the water, which is right in here, that, that warm brown. And just get an idea of individual rocks. And they have to be kind of blurry and out of focus. They're underneath the water. So you kind of blend them in. And even though I might not be able to see this because there's grass in front, I'm going to put it in there in case my grass, you know, you can probably see it through my grass. It may be different than the grass you see in the picture. So I just paint. I don't leave it blank just in case it shows through. finish up with some of the details back here, like the bottom of this rock. It's a little darker than I have it. Maybe a few dark spots that I can blend. In. So, so you see my technique, I add the wet paint and then I take a, a brush with no wet, no paint on it at all and I just kind of scrub and that softens it up and makes it a little more realistic. And there seems to be a little of reflection of this green in the water so I can find the green that I did before. Above it. And always remember that it should be the water, the colors in the water should be a little darker than the color above it that it's reflecting. So sometimes I will start off with the actual color that I see and then just blend it away and then it will automatically kind of darken up. I like, I, I like to make sure that I do, um, if I put a color in one area, that I have that same color somewhere else. I don't always, I, 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 I want to uh, repeat that color several times. I don't want to leave it all by itself. And uh, that way I know that my color is balanced and it, there's a little bit of that here and there. I don't put it random, I look for that color, I find that color in my photograph and I think the longer you look at your picture the more colors you're going to see. Let's put in the highlights of the water that's rushing through. Now it's always a little tricky to do moving water or still water. Water is kind of tricky anyway. And, uh, but remember the water that's moving, that's white or light colored is reflecting the colors in the sky. Um, and so I'm using kind of that same light blue color. Some of those colors I used in the highlights for the, um, for the rocks. And I also used them already back here. Also, um, now that it's dry, I can increase the contrast. This color is almost white, but it's not quite. It's just got the very tint, very light tint of blue in it. All right, let's add some of these bright highlights way back here. Water is rushing down this creek. They're probably going over little rocks. It's very shallow. 
my husband was fishing here, he was standing and his, only his ankles were covered in water, so it's not very deep. And there are fishies in here. There's a, like a little pool over here somewhere where there, it's a little deeper, where it's, you don't see the rapids. Okay. Now, this area in here is a little complicated because we have water coming out in rings. And that's always very challenging. I see um, the difference between my photograph and my painting is there's a larger space between my rock and these rocks than there is over here. So I can either make my rock bigger and adjust it or bring these rocks a little closer. I think that's easier. Maybe I'll do a little bit of both. over here. I noticed um, some more green reflections. I'm going to do some of those before I work on the highlights. I'm going back to the green that we used before over here and put some of those in here. darkened up this green just a little bit. And I, all I did was add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it. Also want to add some little bit of those warm colors that I see above it. This is all reflecting all those trees in the distance. So once I put in those colors then I'm gonna again kind of blend it in with my soft brush. I'm looking at both my pictures, this one so I can see the detail and this one so I can see the scale of it because I can easily go crazy and get it too big. the way they are. You don't have to blend them, but I like to soften them up just a bit. I think they look a little bit more realistic that way. And it's okay if it's not exactly like the photograph, as long as it looks like water. It doesn't have to look like that water exactly. But if it looks wet, that's all that's important. Reflection right in here isn't as dark. It's more on the purple side, so I'm going to use I mean it isn't as light as it's more on the purple side. It's a little darker, so I'm going to use a little bit darker purples Water is reflecting all the stuff around it so 
just colors it or up above it. They may not see it. And I've exaggerated this color just a bit, but that's okay because I want my painting to be even better than the photograph. Sometimes our photos just don't have the light and life to it that we remember when we were actually there. Closer and closer, the reflections kind of get bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter. And they're getting close to being almost white right in here. And add a little bit of medium to that and made it nice and thick and nice and bright. As it's getting really close it's not quite as bright so you got to kind of vary your highlights as you see them now the texture up here in the front is a little bit hard to emulate so I'm just going to kind of do random strokes here I might even go ahead and do a little bit of splatter I love splatter right in here just I got it all over the place, but that's okay. I can fix it. Sometimes these little random splatters add just what you need to it. That looks like sparkles on on my the surface. 